Hi, I'm Adam Perry, Senior Product Manager for AutoCAD. Let's talk about design and documentation. We all know good design means a competitive edge. As an engineer or designer, you're pushed to innovate, and you're also pushed to design products that can be manufactured quickly and inexpensively. We focus a lot of our attention making sure our designs will be successful. We model, analyze, and measure product performance under a variety of conditions. But design is only half the equation. We also need to document our designs for manufacturing. And arriving at that finished documentation can be filled with a different set of challenges. For example, manually fine-tuning a drawing can be prone to error. And when that design changes, it can mean costly edits in the documentation. But what if you could enjoy tight integration between your design and documentation processes, regardless of whether you use software like Inventor, SolidWorks, Katia, ProEngineer, Rhino, or NX to create that design? And what if your tasks were more automated, helping you reduce some of those manual fine-tuning errors? I'm going to introduce you to some exciting new capabilities in AutoCAD and AutoCAD Mechanical 2012 that help you realize that vision, creating better manufacturing drawings. We call it model documentation. You can easily import models created from a variety of CAD applications and quickly generate a variety of 2D views of those models. Add your dimensions and annotations, and you've got finished documentation. Let's take a look at it in action. Here we're going to import a non-Autodesk file type into model space. Now today I'm going to select the ProE or .g file type, but we also support all of the most common EDCAD file types. SolidWorks, Rhino, NX, JT, Katia. Notice the import process takes place in the background. For a large file translation, this actually could take a little while, so it leaves you free to do other tasks in AutoCAD while that's processed. The job's complete. I click the bubble notification and there's our solid model. We're going to explode the block and change the color to green. That'll make the drawing views pop a little bit more in paper space as we create our drawing views. Now we're ready to create our model documentation. First I'm going to insert my base view which is a top view, but now I'm quickly able to move into creating my supplementary orthographic views. Here's a front view and a side view, and I'll also add an isometric view in the corner. Now by default there's a view style, but you can very easily change the view style to something else. Here we're going to select wireframe, and there's plenty of other things you can change as well, one of which is scale. We're going to go ahead and make the scale smaller so that the drawing views fit a little bit more easily on the page, but you could have just as easily selected larger. Now the children view are related to the parent view in a number of different variables. Scale is one of them. We can change that though so that they're independent. Here I'm going to grab the isometric view and I'm just going to make it a little larger so that it shows more prominently on the page. Reorient our view and we're ready to move on to the next steps. One of the pieces that makes model documentation so valuable is that these drawing views are intelligent. So when I move the base view, the related views move along with them. I can also change a display of interference and tangent edges with the click of a mouse button. Once I'm done, we're ready to begin dimensioning our model. I'm going to add a few representative dimensions to the model. First, I'll use a diameter dimension. I'm also going to add uh, just a simple linear dimension. And then I'll finish off by adding a angled dimension uh, just to show that these are true AutoCAD entities and you can access them for dimensioning purposes. One of the advantages of this workflow is we're able to utilize some of AutoCAD's other tools to make changes to the model. In this case, we're going to use the Edit in Fusion button, which launches Inventor Fusion, to allow us to take advantage of the direct modeling capability there. This means someone who may not be as familiar with 3D tools in general can make some basic edits that you see in an imported model, and then we're going to go ahead and bring that model back in AutoCAD. Here we are in the Fusion workspace. Since this is an imported part and probably purchased, much of the work we're going to do would be cleanup or just making small edits. So here I'm just going to take advantage of the press pull capability to change the length of this shaft. In this case, I'm going to shorten it. One of the other changes I might like to make is to go ahead and put a radius on this hole. And I might want to do that because my designer is not going to add a nut and bolt set there. Once I'm finished with that operation, 
I just want to bring this solid model back into AutoCAD. And look at that. We get a bubble notification in the bottom right hand corner that shows our drawing has changed. And then each drawing view has a red glyph that shows our drawing views are out of date. Now I have some options here. I could update all the views or defer updates if I know I'm going to make more changes. I want to update the views here and then I want to see what happens to those dimensions I created earlier. We're going to run the dimension reassociate command which gives us our last piece of great functionality. And that is the ability to reattach dimensions that might have become disassociated as part of the model changes. Now the power here is that only the dimensions that are disassociated are selected. You can imagine a drawing with hundreds or thousands of dimensions and how painful would it be to have to hunt through all those dimensions to find the ones that were no longer attached. To get started today, download the AutoCAD trial. Thanks for watching.